Today we have another video from Dr. David Oliver where he's going to be talking to you all about herniated discs, the causes of herniated and bulging discs, as well as the symptoms you will feel if you have them, as well as some of the treatment options you can explore on your own to treat them uh, from your home. So when we talk about a herniated disc, we have to look at the actual structure that's involved here. So we're talking about the intervertebral disc, which is the disc that separates the two bones in the spine. So if we look at a model of the spine, you know, we have the different sections of the spine. We have our cervical spine, which is our neck. We have our thoracic spine, which is our mid-back. And then we have our lumbar spine, which is our low back. So we're focused right now on this low back, this lumbar spine. And if we look at the spine itself, we have the bones. We have the vertebrae here, which is this white one, and another one below it. In between that, we have this tan color material. That's called your intervertebral disc. And the way to think about an intervertebral disc is it's like a big jelly donut. So the outside's semi-firm, and inside is a jelly-like material. If we get enough damage to that outer ring of that disc, that jelly-like material can start to squirt its way out. This is not good because it's not, that jelly-like material is not designed to be in those areas. This can cause the symptoms of a herniated disc. Unfortunately, herniated discs are very common in society nowadays, and there's a variety of reasons for that. The number one way to irritate a disc is flexion. So basically flexion, if I were to flex forward, this is flexion. So if we're to take the spine model again and demonstrate that, if you were to look at the spine from the side and you took, looked at this lower back and you flexed it forward, essentially this front area of the spine you're compressing, which pushes all the material backwards. If you get enough compression and enough load, it's actually going to cause a bulge or a herniation at this back side of the disc. So repeated flexion we find to be the most problematic for these spines. The most common time you're, you're flexing that spine is what you're doing right now, sitting. Sitting is flexion. Every time we sit down, we flex our lower spine a little bit. Studies have actually shown just sitting, even with great posture, will increase the pressure in that disc 50%. You sit with poor posture, you can increase it up over 100% of what it normally is. Repeated flexion, repeated sitting is going to weaken that disc over time which is going to cause a disc bulge, can cause a herniation. The most common symptoms we find with a herniated disc or a bulge disc are localized pain. So we could just find pain that is just centered over the low back. That can be a symptom of a bulge disc. If that disc is starting to impinge or irritate a nerve root, we can have symptoms that travel away from the spine. The discs or the nerves that innervate our lower back, so if we're to look at the spine again and we're to look at these yellow nerves, these nerves exit the spine and travel down our leg. They control the muscle activity, they control the sensations of our lower, lower limbs. If they start to get irritated, you're going to start to feel symptoms down here. It can start out with a general numbness and tingling, it can progress to burning pain, radiating pain, sharp pain, electric-like pain. There's a variety of nerve-like symptoms that can develop. If you get enough irritation to a nerve root, you can actually start to develop weakness in those lower uh, extremities. If we see muscle weakness, we become more concerned about this condition, and it's something that needs to be addressed immediately. So the symptoms of a herniated disc can be anything from just general localized pain in your back. It can be a radiating type of pain, which can be either numbness, tingling, burning, electric-like, symptoms that travel away from the spine. These can go down your leg, they can go to your knee, they can go to the back side of your leg, the front side, they can go all the way to your toes. These are what we call radiating symptoms because of impingement of a nerve root. So when we talk about sitting equaling flexion, I want to go, go into this a little more detail because some people don't really understand why that is. Basically, when you sit down, this lower back portion here, you have a little bit of a curve, or you should anyway, but most people don't. Hardly anybody sits down at their computer or at their table and sits there like this. Most people, the most common thing is actually to flatten their low back out a little and push it against the back of their chair. That's essentially taking those lower vertebrae and flexing them forward. Most people will sit there at their computers and type away, and again, we have that head moving forward, and we're just in this rounded position. So a way to visualize that is if I'm sitting here with good curved posture, this is good. We're not flexing forward as much. But as soon as I round out my lower back and sit down, that's what happens. So we're flexing those lower vertebrae, putting more pressure through these lower discs, which eventually is going to cause weakness. Most people are sitting 8 to 12 hours a day every day. You do that enough, you're going to weaken those discs and eventually you'll have a problem. So for treatments of a herniated discs, there's a variety of things you can try to do yourself at home to alleviate some of that irritation and that, that, that inflammation that's occurring at that disc level. So the easiest one to do is avoid the activities that are irritating it. So that means avoiding as much sitting as possible. This is hard for some people because of work, but you need to take breaks at least. Get up every 20 to 30 minutes, at least for a minute or two, and walk around. 
The other thing you could do is ice. You know, ice is a great way to decrease inflammation. You do not want to put heat on the low back when it's in an inflamed state like this. You can actually make the symptoms worse. I can't tell you how many times I've had people come into my office and they tell me, oh, I, I, I fell asleep on a heating pack last night and I couldn't move this morning. Well, there's a reason for that. They, the heat increased the inflammation in their low back, which caused more pressure on the nerve, more pressure at the disc level, which caused more symptoms. So icing for 20 minutes on and at least 40 minutes off, repeating that throughout the day, the first several days of the injury can go a long way in reducing that inflammation. So you want to ice, you want to reduce the activities that are stressing those discs. When you're resting, instead of sitting, what you should do is lay down with your feet up on an object, either a, a chair or you could put pillows under your knees to take some pressure off. Anytime your knees are flexed up, you're going to take pressure off your low back. So when you're sleeping at night, if you sleep on your back, try putting pillows under your knees. Take some pressure off. If you're sleeping on your side, try actually putting a pillow between your knees and that'll take pressure off your low back as well. The most common time for people to have pain and, and irritation is actually in the morning time because that disc swells overnight. It's very common to see that. You want to be very careful in the morning time getting out of bed so you don't irritate it. So no flexion at all the first couple hours that you, you get up. You want to walk around and try and just get things moving gently. You want to avoid anything that causes pain is the general rule. There are a variety of exercises you can do to help with the pain. So one of the best ones and one of the ones I always give patients initially when they come in with this is a cat cow. It's a simple basic exercise that we can utilize to eliminate some of the irritation or eliminate some of that bulging that's going on. Uh, it's very good for most people. I did an extensive video on the cat cow exercise and how to do it properly and the things to avoid so you could check it out at backauthority.com. There are also many other exercises you could do to try to eliminate some of that irritation and that stress on the, the nerve or the disc level. Uh, so it's important to try to look into these and only do exercises that feel good. If you're doing an exercise and it's increasing your symptoms or causing more discomfort, it's not a good exercise. When it comes to low backs, the, the rule is not no pain, no gain. If you're feeling pain, you should avoid that activity. Uh, and if none of these modifications, whether it's the ice or the, the, the activity limitation, avoiding flexion or doing your cat cow, if that's not helping to alleviate your symptoms, it's important you, you seek professional help. All right, we hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like it and share it with a friend. Also, if you'd like to get a PDF of specific exercises, to relieve herniated discs as well as low back pain, we can send you that PDF right away. There's gonna be a link to that somewhere here on the video, or there's gonna be a link in the description below to get that PDF. Also, make sure to check out our website, backintelligence.com, for more back pain tips.